اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم رب شر لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي السلام عليكم एवरीवन होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर डूइंग गुड एंड हैविंग एन अमेजिंग डे राइट नाउ एंड इफ यू आर नॉट स्माइलिंग स्माइल राइट नाउ एज यू नो इट्स द सुन्ना ऑफ आवर बिलवेड प्रॉफिट मोहम्मद सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम सो टुडेस टॉपिक इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग it's the origin of janaza funeral prayer and also how did we learn about how to bury a person in islam how did we come about that so it all started when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed prophet adam al islam and his wife hawa or eve may peace be upon her on earth so after that they had 40 children she gave birth prophet adam al islam's wife she gave birth 20 times and every time to a pair a boy and a girl subhanallah and all of them were of different colors different shapes and different sizes so after a while as time passed they grew up and allah naturally had put an inclination or you know desire to get married or to be with the opposite gender so One of the older sons of Prophet Adam al Islam, he was named Kabil, or if you translate it in English, it comes out as Cain. And one of the younger sons was named Habil or Abel in English language. Now, Kabil or Cain was not that good looking, but his sister, you know, his sister who, who how they were born together. his womb sister you know that they were born together as a pair so kabil's sister kain's sister was very good looking very good looking but he was not that good looking and habil abel he was very good looking and his sister was not that good looking so you see how in marriage it's about looks again so what happened was that prophet adam al islam instructed them with the will of allah that you are going to marry his sister and he's going to marry your sister so kabil kain was going to marry abel's sister and abel was going to marry kain's sister but kabil kain was not happy with that he said that why should i give you my sister because i don't want to marry your sister as she's not that beautiful she's not that good looking and my sister is so good looking so you will get such a good looking wife but i won't so he was a bit jealous about that and so what happened after that was that there was a conflict now that he didn't want to marry kain didn't want to marry at all so prophet adam al islam talked to them about it tried to solve this come up with a solution and then he prayed to allah about what to do and allah said that ask both of them to offer a sacrifice offer charity now kabil he was a shepherd and no sorry i'm sorry kabil was a farmer kain was a farmer and abel was a shepherd so when they offered the sacrifice the charity they since there were no poor people at that time they used how it worked was they used to offer it on the mountain so what happened was that kabil came he offered you know a very not even mediocre but since he was a farmer he had produce it was not that good of a produce it was like almost rotten and he gave it as a charity and abel he gave a very very good animal as a sacrifice as a charity so what happened one charity one sacrifice was accepted and was one was not and it's obvious which one was not accepted as he uh, came gave you know a rotten produce so allah did not accept that as a charity and allah said that whoever charity would be accepted will be the right now what happened was and let me tell you this i didn't tell you i'm sorry that how they knew that charity was accepted was that once they put their 
sacrifice on the mountain they would go back and they would come back and if the charity was eaten by fire it means it's accepted but if it wasn't it was still there then it means it's rejected so now Cain was even more jealous and more envious that first of all he's not that good looking as his brother secondly if he gets a wife she would not be that good looking and his brother would get such a good looking wife and now his charity is not accepted as well so what he says is that you know what i'm going to kill you imagine that Cain says that to his own brother that i'm going to kill you because of these things because of a conflict in marriage and what was the conflict all about looks beauty it happened at that time as well it happened at that time as well so now how did his brother reply and it's written in the Quran as well he said that you may stretch your hand to kill me but I will not stretch my hand to fight with you or to kill you back as I have fear of Allah the all-knowing the creator and he said that Allah accepts the charity of those who are conscious of Allah so he was not conscious of Allah that's why he gave a rotten I mean he was obviously conscious of Allah but he did not give a good sacrifice so he was still jealous and envious and now all of this why is it happening because of shaitan Prophet Adam al -Islam used to give lessons and lectures to all of his children about the same thing that what's the purpose of this life why you're supposed to praise Allah and how you're supposed to not let shaitan deceive you because he was deceived himself by shaitan and he used, he used to instruct them but still shaitan put this thought in Kabil Cain's mind and he basically showed him how to kill the other person how would anyone know at that time in the beginning of the time that how you're supposed to in the beginning of humankind I mean that how you're supposed to kill someone so what happened was he basically because of jealousy and envy you know he picked up a stone it's not confirmed he picked up a stone or something very hard and he threw at him threw at his brother and he died he died so now after that right after that he he started looking at his brother who was on the ground and he was regretting it he was remorseful and this is what happens every time when the shaitan makes you do the wrong thing he just goes away then and then you feel regret and Allah says in the Quran as well that this is the sign of a mu'min of a believer that when you do a good thing you are happy when you do a wrong thing you feel guilt you feel regret you feel bad this is the sign of a believer so he was a believer but shaitan made him do those things and made him think like that and so he killed his brother but he was feeling regret so a day passed and he's feeling regret so he went back and prophet adam al -Islam asked him that where is your brother and you know he was like a bit uh, agitated and he was like how do I know where uh, my brother is, where is Abel, how do I know, I don't know about it and Prophet Adam al -Islam knew that there was something wrong. So two days pass by, three, third day passes by and now from the body because the body is still there, the stench starts to come and Kabil King is still regretting it what he had done because he knew it was wrong so Allah is all merciful and Allah knew what was in his heart that he was feeling regret he is a believer he knows he did something wrong so Allah sends a message basically what happens is now this is about how it came about how to bury the starting of how to bury a person Allah sends two crows two crows now two crows come while Cain is sitting there with his brother you know regretting two crows come and one crow starts to dig starts to dig and then he puts the other crow inside and starts to put sand back on the crow look at that subhanallah so Cain is sitting there thinking that 
wait a second i can do the same thing so you know he dug he dug and then he put his brother inside and he put sand over him and he was with regret but he buried him some narration say that he walked a long way and then with his brother on his shoulder he walked a long way and then buried him and also narration say if you look at the tafsir that after that he was so regretful he was so remorseful he was so guilty of his sin that he basically could not stay with his brothers and sisters and Adam uh, his father Adam al -Islam, Prophet Adam al -Islam, and he left he went somewhere else you know he went somewhere else he left because he was regretting it so much we should have a lesson from this that no matter what no matter what we should not let shaitan deceive us into doing things we should ask for Allah's protection all the times now he went away so after time passed by you know uh, Adam al -Islam's, uh, children they started to spread into different places and started to uh, have their own children and life was going on up until one day when Prophet Adam al -Islam fell sick he fell sick he was very ill you know and uh, what happened was while he was sick he was praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he was craving something you know from Jannah because he was in Jannah before and he was craving some fruits that he still remembered the taste of from Jannah so he asked Allah that oh Allah can I have these fruits Allah said okay you know go to the certain place and you will find something for you so Prophet Adam -Salam sent his children to go and check to that place that Allah has sent something for him as he was not able to walk himself he was very sick now when his children went over there they, they saw angels they saw a few angels covered in white and they were holding a few things now they had no idea what that was but they were holding tools for digging there was a shovel and a pick and other tools and they said to his children that go back to your father because his time is up we are here for him so they proceed back to prophet adam -Salam. and now when they are over there Hawa, may peace be upon her, the wife of Prophet Adam salam, she recognized, she recognized one angel, she recognized the angel of death and so she hurried, she came. But then Prophet Adam salam, he, he stopped her, he said, let me talk. So Prophet Adam salam was not afraid, he said that I was created before you, he said to his wife, because he knew that even if he goes, he knows where he is going back to Jannah he knew what kind of life that was no worries at all you can do what you want you can get what you want you can get what you desire so he was not afraid and he knew that he's a believer in Allah so he has nothing to be scared of and and one important thing as it, it is in our religion that the gift the best gift of a believer is death the best gift the best gift of a believer is death because once you're a believer you know that that's the best gift for you all the good things that you have done in this life in this temporary life all the good things all the good deeds you prayed to Allah you helped other people you engaged yourself in good actions everything of that you will be rewarded with in the hereafter that is your gift Jannah so that's the best gift you know death is the best gift you will go to a life that you have always wanted and you know is way better and not even comparable to this life so what happened was that Prophet Adam al Islam said that wait a second don't I have 40 more years to live because Allah said that you're gonna live for a thousand years and so he was 960 years old so he said wait a second don't I have 40 more years to live so the angels reminded him that don't you remember that you gave 40 years of your life to Hazrat Dawud 
and he said no i don't remember now this is another interesting incident that took place which we can talk about in some other video so then he was reminded about it and he said okay that's fine so what he did on his deathbed before angels took his life is that he gathered all of his children and he said to them that listen Allah is not going to leave you alone Allah is going to send his messengers to you providing the message they would be in different they would be from different races they would be from of different colors and they would have different dialects and they would be in different places in the world but Allah will send them to you and all of them will have the same message that Allah is one so worship him there is no partner to God and you should not ascribe any partner with him that is one message la ilaha illallah so he said this to all of his children and then the angels took his life they took his soul and he died peacefully and happy happily and happily he was happy to go away back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so after that the angels with the help of his children they grabbed the tools that they brought with themselves and they dug a grave for him and they washed his body and they enshrouded him and then they put him in the grave and then they left some space and then they put uh, left some space and then they put the sand over it so once the angels buried Prophet Adam al Islam they looked at the children and said Hadihi sunnatukum that this is how you're supposed to do it in the future so they washed the body they enshrouded the body they left some space then put something and after that they put the sand over it again and buried Prophet Adam al Islam so they instructed that this is how you do it some narrations say that angel uh, Jibrail al-Islam he basically instructed prophet Sheet al-Islam who was also who would become a prophet in future he was the son of Hazrat Adam al-Islam as well and so some narration says that it was he who basically read the uh, janazah of prophet Adam al-Islam the funeral prayer but some says that the angels did it and then they told the children that this is how you do it so this is basically how this all came about the janazah the funeral the funeral prayer how to bury first it was the son of prophet adam -Islam, and then he was buried himself so this is something which was very interesting i learned recently as well and i thought that i would uh share the story with you guys as well as it is there is a lot to learn from it as well especially that we should not let shaitan deceive us no matter what ask for Allah's protection and also not only that that this life is temporary we're gonna pass away and we should focus on the hereafter not this life so this is it for the video I hope you guys liked it and found it beneficial I thought this story is worth sharing and so I did uh, I hope you guys liked it if you did make sure to hit the like button and please do not forget to hit the subscribe button i really appreciate all of the support that you guys have been giving me you can also follow me on my social media my instagram and my twitter i post daily stuff on it that you guys might like so check the links in the description and uh, that's it take care of yourself be humble be good do good and i will see you guys in the next video assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh